Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and Iron Man here from the Block Runner Metazone, Roving M Scrab, and today we got some DMT updates. You sure do, dude. I brought the clan with you. Clan t shirt. Oh, yeah, the clan. Yeah, if you guys remember that, then like nifty early day, like. That's like week one stuff, dude. <laughs> this is, dude, this, these are the OGs, dude. Gotta move the laptop out of the way. So. Oh, yeah. I know. I mean, There's a lot of stickers on that thing, dude. You know what? There you go. All right. You guys know the shirt. Uh, <laughs> I don't have to like bring it up every time I put it on, but it just happened to coincide with uh, this DMT to- takeover, right? So yeah, yeah. Speaking um, of taking over, we're A and B tier. <laughs> that's apparently. right. Apparently, so according to the Ordinals Nexus, which is like a a reputable news organization for everything happening at Ordinals, right? Hey, man, it's good to see Nat Cats and the Royals like. In consideration, right? At least it wasn't like a complete fade-a-thon, <laughs> right? As other like uh, reputable ordinal influencers probably would do, right? If right. they were to aggregate some sort of like tier list, I yeah. doubt any of these collections would have been like part of the conversation, right? So Agreed. Yeah, so it's good to see. So that's some emphasis. DMT is actually like cracking through, you know, the the walls that have been established within the ordinal's nexus, right? Yeah, so I would I would agree. Yes. So, yeah, I'm happy to see that. That's all a testament to the community. You guys are the ones kind of, like, pushing these barriers, right? Yeah. So, okay, Ornal Nexus. And a big thing that happened recently was um, Benny was on an interview and uh, talking about, like, the integration with TAP and ICP. Yeah, man. <laughs> Did you happen to be able to check in with that? I have not. I have not watched it yet, but I'm going to. Yeah, I mean, you can watch it, but I think you pretty much already know everything just from like yeah. internal workings alongside with Benny. Yeah, I pretty much know everything, dude. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. <laughs> you know enough to where like, you know, the video might not introduce anything new to you, yeah. but nonetheless, everybody else needs to kind of watch this to, to get the context of how the TAP protocol functions, first of all, mm-hmm. and like why that's important, because without it, we couldn't do anything that we're doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so l- let me see if I can summarize what's happening here with the integration with TAP and ICP. Is without even watching the video. Without watching. Okay. Right? Yeah. What's happening here is uh, typically when you look at any platform like mscribe or .io or anything that has like a minting functionality or whatever it is, um, you're leveraging a backend system to manipulate UTXOs. That's ultimately what's happening, mm-hmm. right? So what does that mean? That means that you and I, as users of Ordinals, we have to trust whatever's happening on the backend is going to actually execute, and you know we have to believe that that's going to happen. So so far, it's it's a pretty safe assumption just because we're that early and people are actually trying to contribute here. Mm-hmm. But what's happening is you have to trust th- you know the developers and the backend that nothing's a uh, run amok, mm. right? Mm-hmm. So so how do you mitigate that? You need to create smart contracts. Why? Because smart contracts are publicly available and auditable, and you can read the code if you were had the skill to read code. Yeah. Right? But ultimately, you have to trust the, yourself and in, in your ability to read code to trust that nothing's afoot here. Okay. Right? And so that's what ICP does. It's, it's a platform that is integrated to Bitcoin, that allows for a decentralization of a piece of code that you don't have to trust Benny. You don't have to trust Mscribe. You don't have to trust anybody. You just go and read the code because it's available to everybody, but it's being executed on ICP. Mm. But that is be, is manipulating UTXOs on Bitcoin directly on layer one. Correct. Yeah, and it's just really cool to see like inscriptions themselves being, you know, as we're typically used to, um, you know, injecting the the command rule set of of a of a protocol. That's what these JSON, uh, you know, meta protocols native to Bitcoin. That's what they do, right? There's this in rules instruction sets, mm-hmm. and to see yeah. like a uh, an ICP container able to kind of like s- know that that's occurring and yeah. to be able to read that information and execute some function in real time. Yeah. Right. That's really cool. So th- that is kind of the purpose of this. So that unlocks a lot of new abilities for developers, right? Specifically for DeFi, GameFi, um, anything that has any kind of like structured logic to it, like where you can kind of pre program predictable outcomes, I guess, in the future, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is going to have a lot of implications for ourselves, uh, spe- specifically for metaverse app development and such. So 
yeah, man, we're happy to see tap grow because we've been like in this whole we've been in the weeds of tap since like the very beginning. <laughs> since the very beginning, yeah. Out of pure like necessity, it was the only way to achieve DMT on Bitcoin. That's it was right. the only way. Yeah. So it seems like we're heading in the right direction. So uh, if you guys, st- this is good to watch if you want some more context yeah. around this uh, partnership. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there's a lot to kind of deep dive in, into this, and we're gonna keep talking about this in the coming weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, DMT Heroes Blockout. Super fan. Yeah, super fan. I know you're probably watching this. Maybe not. Maybe you're like. Oh, he's definitely watching this. Okay. <laughs> you you want to sa- wave the super fan, dude? Of course, dude. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna send you the flowers you sent us on our last interview. Dude. Yeah, that's so right. That's right. Just like throw flowers at each other perpetually from here on out, dude. Yeah. Because, because, yeah, man, we're we're happy for you, dude. Like, dude, you you fucking did it. Yeah. You fucking did it, dude. The AI integration with like um the concepts of dmt and non-arbitrary creation it's like officially like an actual meta i think at this point right mm-hmm. yeah because it, i mean it, i wouldn't be able to say that if this was some sort of like closed off technology framework but the whole purpose of this is to have this as like a, an accessible dev tool essentially for any unat deployer moving into the future right so and we ourselves are going to be utilizing it for you know Different development use cases, right? Yeah, metaverse, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so this is huge, dude. Like, this is a a new tool on the horizon, and um, I mean, that's typically not what we what interests us. So, right? not not only the tool is cool, but the product of DMT Heroes is also cool with like uh, an adventure game that essentially AI manipulates your images. Yeah, like it's gonna be zombie attack, alien attack, and all of a sudden your character is in under siege. Correct. Yeah, so this was a very fast blockout. Fastest, I think, that has happened on Inscribe. Yeah, the fastest. Yeah, man. So shout out to that. There's a new community. Uh, if you happen to miss out on the Mint, I mean, I still in, and you still want you know, to be a participant in like seeing how this, uh, this sector of DMT kind of evolves moving forward, I encourage you guys to join uh, Superfans Discord. Uh, link will be in the description, hopefully. If not, you know, just join our Discord and somebody will share it with you. Yeah. All right, moving on. We uh, we were in talks with Foxy, and they had a uh, a sort of like a a like beta a, test, like a public beta, yeah. Yeah, and here's just like a, some of the reactions of people interacting with uh, the Foxyverse, and you could see kind of like their Bitminer in action here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, people are shooting at zombies, they're shooting at each other, mm-hmm. um, and the reaction has been pretty positive. Yeah, people like it, dude. It's like I think. Uh you know, this is one of those moments where I think uh, inspiration hits right now. It's it's starting to make sense, like, why Bitmap is valuable, right? It, it, developers now have the ability to essentially r- run with whatever model they seem is appropriate to, like, add value to, like, the base layer of a Bitmap. Yeah. So this is a perfect representation of that, right? Now you have, like, an actual multiplayer immersive environment, right, which these are necessary ingredients for the metaverse. Right, right. I mean, there are obviously many other I- pillars of the metaverse, you know, such as like, uh, you know, at least some framework for uh, a digital economy to arise, which is exactly what the Bitminer is all about, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so the Bitminer is interesting because it's going to be a unique 3D asset. It's going to be deployable on their bitmap, and you're going to be mining Foxy tokens and uh, a bunch of other stuff that's going to be coming in the pipeline. Yeah, I think anybody can kind of distribute tap tokens through their uh, Bitminer mechanism, right? So it's it's it is basically it's it's going to be a main pillar within that uh, metaverse stack. So I don't know if you wanted to hop in, dude. Do like a yeah, a little impromptu. You want to lose or what? <laughs> impromptu duel. So we're gonna actually hop hop in ourselves, right? All right. So I'm running in here. Uh, let's let's meet up. Let's duel <laughs> out in the. Uh, at the monkey bars, dude? I'm right behind you. So oh, are you? Just keep uh, running. Just, yeah, just don't keep, shoot me, dude. Just keep running. Just keep All running. All right, there's the uh, bit miner in action. Why are you slow? I'm like on your ass, dude. Well, I'm, <laughs> dude, I'm, that's because I'm zigzagging, dude. Watch I want this. you to shoot me, dude. I just lapped you, dude. Dude, I'm <laughs> zigzagging over here. All right, so this is it. This is the actual bit miner, like literally humping the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 in full I- digital commodity extraction mode, dude. As yeah. you can see, it, it is literally mining non-arbitrary tokens. All right, like, you ready, dude? Hold on, hold on. Let me. Dude, so I got my sights right on you, dude. Wait, where do you go? I don't see you anymore. Are oh, you way over there? Okay, let's. All right, right here in the road, dude. 
On the road? Yeah. No, man. I'm not going to give you line of sight. <laughs> Are you starting now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Get watch, wreck, dude. Watch this. I'm going to snipe you from way back here. So if you don't know what we're doing. Damn it. Stop we're, moving. We're engaging in peak male activity <laughs> here. <laughs> peak <laughs> <laughs> There's no more peak peak veil activity than 1v1 Mortal Kombat in the metaverse, dude. This is how we sh- should be settling our just... Oh, God. Oh, God oh him, Reg, get out of here, dude. Damn it, I told you to take a seat. <laughs> I told you. So you turned it on with the camera to start rolling, dude, because I was smoking you before we uh, started Negative, rolling. Negative, dude. I let you kill me, so... <laughs> Give me that false hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that that's like a singular demonstration of, like... What can be done? Peak here, male right? activity. That's right. <laughs> it doesn't get any more peak than that, dude. Yeah. All right. So that was cool. Um, so we're gonna be talking to, um, I guess, the Foxy guys again uh, eventually once we get the Bitminer going. Yeah, I mean, I and mean, the DMT stuff all set up because there's a lot more kind of like. Yeah. Damn, I'm getting wrecked over here by the zombie. Yeah, I mean, as you could tell, th- this is a this is an intricate like thing. Not just the Bitminer itself, but like uh, the Foxyverse. There's a lot that goes into developing all this stuff, right? This isn't trivial. This wasn't like executed like over a weekend. Yeah. This has been in development for for many months, right? So this is a this is going to be a main contributor to like proving the bitmap theory, right? Whether you can create like an actual viable component of a metaverse like leveraging bitmap, right? So that's what's on full display here, and I, yeah, like as we've seen, people like it. Uh, the Bitminer is only going to continue to add value to that. So, yeah, we're excited for that. That It's probably the next, like, major, major mint that's going to go down on Mscribe. Yeah. There's no official date yet, but assume it's coming pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. We I'm got listening. a lot of stuff to test. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, really excited about this. All right, moving on. We got uh, Tommy here. Bitminer looks great. World's first the deployable DMT. So, yeah, we were just talking about that. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Oh, there's something interesting here. Yeah, so the fastest gun. I'll challenge that, dude. doesn't get faster than that. <laughs> so, but he has an interesting concept here, a proposal for the bitmap ecosystem. Right? Okay, so the metagame proposal for the bitmap ecosystem is, uh, I think we kind this of... It's pretty long, so... We skimmed through it. It's basically block drops. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's like from a, from a developer, a game developer's perspective of like, you know what would be cool is to devise some mechanism where we can issue and distribute these assets from within a bitmap environment, right? Where, you know, if you have a certain bitmap, like different commodities can be extracted from whatever activity, right? So it's all dependent on that unique blocks, specific data set, right? So it's like, hey, wouldn't it be nice to have a framework for developers to kind of like execute on this? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, forward thinking, dude. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, so he gives some examples here. He's like, here's the difference between t- two different bitmaps. Yeah. They differ in only one digit, right? 635543, 6, mm-hmm. But they actually differ vastly when, when you're actually analyzing the... The, uh, the block the, data. Yeah, the patterns within the blocks, and then therefore the commodities tied to those patterns, right? Yeah, so here's... Could inscribe five valid raspberry seeds and four valid apple seeds. In contrast, the owner of 543... Could inscribe four valid raspberry seeds and zero valid apple seeds. Mm. So now you have... These are digital commodities based off the block data of your bitmap. Yeah, now you have like the introduction of, again, more pillars of economic sustainability, right? And this is just... So what do you do with commodities? Why tie the the tangible value of a a digitally produced commodity to something... You know, native to Bitcoin, like a pattern, right? Like yeah, I mean, you could create a MMORPG based off of like the patterns on Bitcoin. So, say for example, you have like this entire game ecosystem that anyone, any bitmap holder can deploy via a block drop. Mm. And you inscribe this as a child inscription of your bitmap. Yeah. And now you have like these embedded resources in your land that per- that are part of a larger ecosystem of a game. Correct. And so, if you needed like thirty apple seeds. Well, you need to go to one bitmap and collect apple seeds, and you go to another bitmap and collect, and then you can craft <laughs> your your next item. Hundred percent, yeah, totally. And maybe with things like potential, like even extensions to that, like maybe uh, 
the concept of child authorization maybe or something like that where you know you can grant permissions as a bitmap owner to somebody who's participating in this game is like so i'm here at your land right i know your your pattern here exists therefore i can extract this commodity yeah right so you know you as the landowner you might not want to actually do that yourself but you know maybe for a small fee because for this specific user of of, of an ecosystem a game ecosystem whatever this is a very valuable commodity to me because I'm, I'm I'm on a journey, right? I'm trying to build. Yeah. We're trying to craft the next big thing, <laughs> whatever that is, dude. Whether it's like a uh, a penthouse, <laughs> as know. as one does, yes, or a uh, an Xbox machine. Sure, I want one of those. I'm really struggling to like think of like cool things for some reason, <laughs> like uh, dude, a cabin, dude. <laughs> Oh, you would the I went other backwards. direction. <laughs> yeah. You were way less cooler. But, but yeah, you know, you get the point, right? Yeah. It's just tying all these different strings of of value layers to each other, right? To to achieve a closed loop, in a sense. Yeah. Of yeah. like value propagation, and it all stems from the data. And at the end of it, it results in a in a much more enriched metaverse experience, right? Which is, yeah. I, I think, the whole goal. <laughs> Of all of it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, and it's all tied to block data, so that's that's the best part. So yeah, uh, TLDR, block drops. <laughs> that's yeah. how you do it. Yeah. All right, moving on. MDV, um, Blockcraft World Update 0 0.3. So he's creating sort of like a uh, Minecraft. Yeah. Speaking of like commodity extraction, I mean, Minecraft kind of like set the whole damn. Well, that's not true. I mean, there's there were other MMO environments where like the idea of extracting commodities mm -hmm. it's pretty regular activity right but still nonetheless i mean you could easily leverage this environment for something like that like an actual commodities extraction zone yeah. just just an idea mdv yeah but yeah mdv is definitely up to something dude he's tinkering if you don't remember the vessels like he's obviously highly skilled right so he's in our interview with him was like you know what dude all those skills need to be applied to the metaverse and i think he uh, took our yeah. Took our recommendation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so this functionality is really cool. Um, it's very similar to inscribe.space. Yeah, it's all on-chain, right? Yeah. Yeah, so for you, like, on-chain maxis in the crowd, you know, this is potentially another user tool at your disposal, right? Yeah. Speaking of tools, we've got some new ones to introduce, right? That's right. Um, yeah, so what you're looking at here is the next version of a block pad mint, but in this case... It's parcels of a bitmap. Yeah, so <laughs> we looked earlier at Heroes block out, right? So there was something, there's a different, a distinguishing difference between that mint map of a block pad mint. Yeah. All the squares are the same size, right? <laughs> yeah. It's very arbitrarily yeah. uh, produced, that layout. Right. But also not arbitrary at the same time. The, the, quanti the quantity of squares is dependent on that, that element pattern, right? That's how many mints are available. Right. But yeah, bitmap, as we all know, is a non-arbitrary like construct layout for metaverse land ownership in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're familiar with how Web3 metaverses go in the past, some foundational organization is like, you know what? We like the metaverse. We want to spawn a new one. Mm -hmm. So we, we're just going to decide. There's 100,000 of these available squares out there. Arbitrary, yeah. Yeah. And then they just put out this map where they just, some human... Just like hand placed all these squares within that. Yeah. Maybe they made just decisions like, you know what? We should have some big squares in there. Very yeah. arbitrary, right? Right, right. But a bitmap, this was assembled and made by Bitcoin. Right? Yeah. Through forging of transactions across the entire planet right. in a non arbitrary way. So, for example, this big, huge block is an eight by eight, mm. right? So, eight little parcels like this. Mm hmm. Um, on one side and eight on the other, and you get, you know, this, this square meters. Yeah. And then, so there's only one eight by eight and there's another one that's like seven by seven somewhere over here. Yeah. So this is only one of the yeah, 800, 850,000 or so existing bitmaps, right? So yeah, each one's unique. Yeah. Batoshi Blockamoto had the, the wise idea to leverage this like transactional uniqueness as like a, a, a an infrastructure or like a framework for, for, again, metaverse land distribution, right? Yeah. And yeah, so, but it hasn't been fully executed from like a... From a, like a virtual standpoint and also from like a, like a market standpoint either. There's, there's not a huge incentive to inscribe these parcels. Mm. And these parcels are going to be children of a bitmap, mm. right? And so 
Um, to do bulk child inscriptions, that's like a complex thing to do. Of course, it can be done. Um, so that's what's going to be happening here. We're we'll leveraging bulk child inscriptions. People are going to come in, pick a square, mint it, and uh, and then be part of uh, our ecosystem that we're going to be developing Bitmap OS with. Correct. So we've given a name to this. So we've got block pad mints. These are going to be called land distribution events, right? Right. Because uh, that's essentially what's happening here. I mean, the bitmap is considered land, but uh, again, part of the bitmap theory is these parcels are... This a bitmap is actually a community onboarding tool, just mm -hmm. like most yep. things in crypto are, right? Like the, the, but this is the most optimal version of that, where you can actually distribute a, a set of assets to, a, as a community founder, right, the owner of a bitmap, I can now onboard people into an actual uh, shared environment, right? right? Now, a lot of that is dependent on which technology stack you depend to you decide to use and leverage. Yeah. Um, you know, they all differ, right? We just saw Foxyverse. And uh, we have our own in development, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, we'll let you guys know when this is live, but it's in progress. It's going to be happening here in a few weeks. Yeah, uh, tune into the podcast on Saturday. Yeah. Because we're going to go in-depth as far as details. Yeah. Like for this uh, this first attempt at a full land distribution event. Yep. With the bitmap. Yeah, so we're excited. Hopefully, um, if you guys have any questions, definitely let us know in the comment section below. We talked about DMT, Foxy, uh, Heroes, this land distribution event coming up. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let us know. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we will catch you in the next video. Peace.